All righty. All right, so last time we talked about the miracle of the crippled beggar getting healed. And now, um, just like with uh, Acts chapter 2, you get the big miracle, and then Peter preaches afterwards. Here you get the big miracle, and Peter preaches afterwards. I tell you, you do the miracle first, people listen more to the preaching. So here's the preaching. Acts 3, starting in verse 11, going uh, to verse 26. While the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us, at us as if by our own power or godliness we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of, of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repent, then, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out and the times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Christ who has been appointed for you even Jesus. He must remain in heaven until the time comes for God to restore everything, as He promised long ago through His holy prophets. For Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You must listen to everything He tells you. Anyone who does not listen to Him will be completely cut off from among His people." Indeed, all the prophets from Samuel on, as many as have spoken, have foretold these days. And you are heirs of the prophets and of the covenant God made with your fathers. He said to Abraham, Through your offspring all peoples on earth will be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. So that's the end of the recording. We'll see next time that they were kind of interrupted in the middle of the uh, explanation and the speech there. But we see here that Peter uh, preaches, again, a, a great outline. First thing is he gives credit where credit is due. He doesn't, yes, I'm Peter, the awesome apostle. Uh, you want to get a miracle? Come to me. I'll help you out. No, he is absolutely giving glory to God. And he's like, this, <clears throat> this isn't my power or godliness. This is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, God the Father, demonstrating the, uh, his love and affirmation of Jesus the Christ. So, very clearly giving credit where credit is due. And then also, man, calling him out. You know, uh, Peter called him out in chapter 2 in the sermon there. And here, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty strong. Uh, you know, verses kind of 13 through 15, uh, verse 15, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. And we are witnesses of this. So like, you know, he's calling him out. You, you killed the author of life. You had a murderer released to you so that you could murder Jesus. You know, what's wrong with you? So he's very strong. Peter is not scared. He's not uh, intimidated by these people. He's given it just a straightforward Good gospel message, very strong, calling out sin where the sin is. Um, but then he also changes, you know, he calls sin, sin, but then offers the forgiveness of God. So the turn happens in verse 17 there. Now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. And, and he goes on to say, you know, this happened as part of God's plan. It's God's foreknowledge. Um, you did it, but... Uh, you can now turn, you can repent, and times of refreshing can come. 
you know, and so he offers that. He's kind of in the process of explaining all of that, you know, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. You know, just a beautiful picture of, yeah, you messed up. You did something seriously wrong, but there is forgiveness. And that's a huge message, huge, huge message. The, the power of God was shown through the miracles, and then the love of God was explained. The sin wasn't, you know, pretended, you know, Peter didn't pretend the sin wasn't there. He very much brought it out, but then was very clear, hey, repent. Times of refreshing will come. Your sins will be forgiven. You know, yeah, you, you shouted crucify. You know, you killed the author of life. It'll be forgiven. You don't have to worry about it. But you've got to repent and come to God. So Peter preaches a great message again. And then uh, I love the, uh, the very last verse that we read, verse 26. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. So the blessing there is to be given new life, to lo no longer be walking in darkness, no longer be um, you know, missing God to the extent where you want uh, the Son of God crucified, where you, instead of seeing the goodness of Jesus, you want him killed, you know, uh, to be turned from that spiritual blindness into a place of really seeing the goodness of God and being able to participate in that and have times of refreshing come. You know, there's the blessing of being turned from your wicked ways. And that's a blessing we all want to receive. But as I mentioned earlier, it, the conclusion isn't quite the same. We got to a really clear altar call in Acts chapter 2. Here they kind of get interrupted. And this is the end of the recorded sermon. So We'll talk about that tomorrow, but let's make sure we're in a place of repentance and receiving the good things from God so we can be turned from our wicked ways. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us not to miss you, not to think your things are evil or to turn away from your goodness, but Lord, help us to see. Help us to see clearly. Um, we repent of misunderstanding you and whatever things we've done to, to not uh, participate in your truth, Lord, but help us to see. Lord, we want the blessing of being turned from wickedness and being brought into a place of having a right heart before you. So, Lord, we ask that of you, and we ask that you would guide us this day and help us to serve you well. In Jesus' name, amen.